Welcome to Live Daf, your online Daf Yomi Shir. Shalom, welcome back to today's Daf Yomi Brachas Daf Chavches, where eight lines from the top says the Gemara Tana Oisai Hayim that day. The Gemara here is in the middle of discussing the story where Rabbi Gamliel spoke harshly against Rabbi Shua and he caused him shame and embarrassment. The Chacham decided to remove Rabbi Gamliel from being the Nasi, the leader, the head of the yeshiva. Instead, they appointed the Rabbi Lezeb and Azariah. Says the Gemara, that day that Rabbi Lezeb and Azariah assumed the post of the Nasi, they removed the doorkeeper. Because Rabbi Gamliel had a very strict admission policy, which was relaxed now that Rabbi Lezeb and Azariah became the Nasi. Says the Gemara, they removed the doorkeeper. They allowed, permission was granted for all the students to enter the Beis HaMedrash. Why? Rebbe Gamliel, when he was in charge, he would announce and he would say as follows, Any student that is inside is not consistent with his outside, meaning he's not a proper Yerei Shomayim, he's not fully sincere, there's no room for him in the Beis HaMedrash, he may not enter the Yeshiva. However, Rebbe Lezim Nazaria instituted a more lenient policy, he allowed everybody to enter, Okay, you're not on the highest level, you'll get there. So there was a tremendous influx of Talmidim on that day. Says the Gemara, Ahu Yoyma? That day, Itoisfu Kama Sapsali. They added many benches to accommodate the new arrivals. Om Rabbi Yechon, how many benches did they add? Pligiba, there's a machlegs between Abba Yosef ben Destoy and the Rabbana. Chad Amar once said, how many were added? Itoisfu Abba Meya Sapsali. 400 benches would need to be added to accommodate the new arrivals, V'chad Omar Sheva Meir Safsali, 700. Says the Gemara, Have a kochol shodaiti during Gamliel. During Gamliel was dispirited, he felt bad when he saw the, the influx of new Talmud, of new students. Omar, he said, Dilma, perhaps chas v'shalayim, God forbid, manati toyer v'nisrael, I prevented Torah study from amongst Kal Yisrael by, by being so restrictive in my policy, by not allowing all these Talmudim. Achsule b'chelmei, he had a vision in his dream. They showed him from heaven. Chatsvi chivri, white pitchers. The Malian Kitma full of mere ashes, which was a, a sign telling him that no, you did the right thing. Look just like the, the nice, pretty pitchers. They look nice on the outside, but in the inside, they're worthless. Similarly, regarding a student who is not consistently, who's not toichi kibari, is not fully sincere, there's no room for him in the base medrash. Says Umar Veloi, it is not so, really. His policy wasn't justified. It was merely I he, the reason why they showed him this vision, they wanted to, to make him feel good, to rest his mind, but in reality, this wasn't the correct policy. He should have allowed everybody to enter. Apparently, since he was sincere, he meant L'shem Shemayim, he meant well. From heaven, they wanted to prevent him from being dispirited, from feeling bad, but in reality, the, the, the policy that was instituted now was really the correct one. Says the Gemara Tana, Edyos, the Mesechta called Edyos, which contains a, a collection of various halachas, testimonies, Edyos, which we learned yesterday was considered to be Bibchirasa, the choicest one, meaning that in Edyos, all the halachas contained in Edyos are authoritative. Says the Gemara, when was this Mesechta learned? It was learned on that day. Edyos, Boi Bayoim Nishnis. Whenever there's a reference to the word that day, it is indeed that day. There was no unresolved halacha that wasn't clarified on that day. As a result of the influx of Talmidim, of the increased discussions and debates, everything got clarified. It says the Gemara to the point of Even Ramliel himself, even though he was removed from his post, he didn't avoid the Beis Medrash, he came, he, was, he attended the Beis Medrash even that day. He didn't withhold from attending the Beis Medrash, I feel shahs, even one moment, he didn't want to lose the opportunity to learn Torah. The Snan, as we see in the following, in the story, in the following Mishnah. That day, Yehuda who was a convert from the nation of Amun, he arrived in front of them at the Beis Medrash. He wanted to know what is his status. May I enter the call of the congregation, meaning may I marry a Yid, a Jew. You may not enter the congregation. 
There's a pasuk that says, "Loyavai Amoyni Umoyavai B'Kal Hashem." One who arises from the nation of Amoyin or Moyav cannot enter the Kal Hashem. So you're prohibited. Amalei Rabbi Shua Mutarat to love a You are able to enter the congregation. You can marry a yid. Amalei Rabbi Amaliel. How can you say that? There's a pasuk that prohibits it. Amalei Rabbi Shua. One second. Do you propose that the nation of Amon and Moiv are still, are still in their place, are still in their territory? Whoever is found in the, in the territory of Amon belongs to that nation. That is not so. They were already mixed up. Kfar Allah San Cherev, Melech Asher, the king of Asher, San Cherev, came up. Oh, build us, Kolomo, you already confused. He mixed up all the nations. Shnemar of Asher, Gvolis Amim, I'll remove the boundaries of the nation. If I say the same, Shati and their wealth, I'll plunder, but Erd, Kabri Yesh, and their dwellers, I'll bring down. So they're all mixed up. They're, it's one big pot. It's one big confusion, one big Tarevis. And now, once they're all confused, they're all mixed up, if there's something that departs from a Tarevis, we know that there's a halacha, there's a rule that says, V'chol the parish, Meruba parish. Whatever departs from a mixture, we assume that he's related to the Raif, to the majority. Here too, when Yehuda arrived from the mixture of nations, we can rightfully assume that he's coming from the majority. He is not an Amoyni, he doesn't originate in the nation of Amoyn, even though he thinks he does. But the halacha is that we follow the majority, we assume he's coming from the other nations, and he's Mutar, Lavai So This was the opinion of Rabbi Shua to allow him to marry a Jew. Amalir Gamliel. Okay, you're right. There was a bilbo, there was a confusion, a mix-up that took place. But it also says in the Pasuk, Afterwards, I'll return the captives of Bnei Amin to their territory. No, Hashem. They already returned. So, true, they got mixed up, but they're already back in their place. Therefore, they're distinct, they're separate, and whoever comes from Amin is considered to be from the nation of Amin. There's another pasuk. There's another prophecy that says that Hashem will return the captives of Klai Yisrael to their place. And we know that in reality it didn't happen yet. And they haven't returned yet. So apparently some of the Nevuahs have not yet been fulfilled. So just as the Nevuah, the prophecy regarding the Yidin was not fulfilled, similarly regarding the Bnei Amun has yet to come. And therefore we can assume at the present they are still mixed up with all the other nations. Says the Gemara, what was the conclusion of Meyad? Immediately, Hitiru Lavai Bakal. They allowed Yehuda Geramayni to enter the call. So the Chachamim voted in accordance with the Shita, with the opinion of Rabbi Shua, and they allowed him to enter the call. Now, when Gamaliel saw this, he saw that the, the Chachamim sided with Rabbi Shua's opinion, so he gained prominence in his eyes. And now he changed his attitude to Rabbi Shua. If this is the case, that the halacha followed the view of Rabbi Shua, and not my opinion, let me go appease him. Let me ask him Achila on account of the, of the incident that happened. So he went to his house, he came to the house of Rabbi Shua. Chazinu, he notices, the walls of his house are blackened. And he's wondering, why are they black? Amalei, so he told him, Yeshua, Mekosli Beischa, from the color of the, of the walls in your home, Atanikar, it is evident that it is indicative, Shepachamiyata, that you are a, a smith, that you work as a smith, or as Rashi says, you work with coal, you're a coal maker, which apparently wasn't the most respectful, wasn't the most coveted profession. So this is what he, this is the comment that he made to him. Amr Lai so Yeshua responds, Woe to the generation that you are its leader. You're not familiar with the pain, with the affliction that the Tamid Chacham endure, in what effort they require to be misparnis, what exactly they, 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 their profession is, how they support themselves, how they sustain themselves. You, you're a leader, but you weren't, you were a leader, but you weren't in tune, you weren't familiar with what's going on with the Tamil Chachamim. It's not meant to be so, you're meant to be on top of things. Amr Loi, Ramgalil responded to him, Nanesilach, you know, I spoke too harshly against you. Please, Mokhoyli, forgive me. Loi Ashkechwe. Rabbi Shua didn't pay attention to him. So Ramgalil continued, Please, Forgive me for the sake of my, of my ancestors. 
he was a, a descendant of of Hillel of Shem Gamliel. So do it for the honor, for the honor, the covet Abba. Peace. He agreed and he was Michael him. He forgave him. He was appeased. Amru, so now that they resolved, reconciled, they said to each other, Man Neza Vlaimu Rabbanon. Who is going to go to relate to the Rabbanon that we, we will Michael each other, that we reconciled? Amr lahu hau kaivis. This laundry, laundry man said, Ana azilna, I'll go pass on the message to the yeshiva. Shalachu Rav Yushua lebe medrasha. So Yushua sent a message with this kaivis, with this laundry fellow to the base of medrash. As follows. Man de lovishmada, whoever is accustomed to wearing the robe, yubishmada, he is fitting indeed to wear the robe. He's referring to the, the nasiyas, the being in charge, being the leader, one who is meant to be, one who is accustomed to wearing the robe should be reinstated. Uman the loy lovishma, the one who's not accustomed to wearing the robe, Yemerle, can he does he have a right to go tell the one Laman Lovishma to one who is accustomed to wearing the robe? Is he meant to tell him Shlach Madach, go remove your robe, and I'll wear it? So he was sending him a hint that Rogamil should be reinstated. He is the one that's meant to be wearing the robe and not one who is not meant to be wearing the robe or Blazar Nazari. Amalur um, Rabkiva Rabban Rabkiva turned to Rabban and he said, Truka Gala, let's close up the, the gates, the doors. The Lailesu Abdur Ramlil, that the servants of Ramlil shouldn't come with Sal Rabban and, and harass the Rabban. They wanted to, although they, they got the message that there was a, a uh, an appeasement, that they were they reconciled with each other, however, they wanted to proceed with caution without any any pressure from the servants of Ramlil that will come harass them to reinstate their Ramlil. So they went and they closed the doors. And they didn't really receive the message so well. Amr Bishur. So Bishur says, you know, Mut of the Ekum, I will get up. It's better that I personally will get up for Ezla and all the I personally will go tell them, tell the Chacham and Beis Medish. Also, he came, Taraf Ababa, he knocked on the door. Amr Lu, and he told him as follows Maze ben Maze Yazid. We're speaking about the sprinkling the water, the Afer Paraduma, which consisted of, of a special water, Maim Chaim, from a. From a uh, a stream, Maim Chaim, not from a, a pit, so special water with special type of ash from the Paraduma. This is Maza. He's sprinkling the Eifer Paraduma. This was a job, a duty which was fulfilled by a Kain. So we should use this type of metaphor. He said, a Kain who is the son of a Kain, a Kain who has the right to sprinkle on account of the fact that he's the son of a Kain who sprinkles. So he indeed should go ahead and sprinkle. Maza, a sprinkler, Ben Maza, the son of a sprinkler, meaning a kain, the son of a kain, Yaza, he has the right to sprinkle. He has the ability to be Maza, the Afer Par. However, one who is not, neither a Maza, meaning he's not a kain, Maza is nor is he the son of a kain. He has no ability to involve himself in this type of duty. Can he go proclaim to the one who is a Maza, ben Maza meaning a kain, who has the ability to be Maza, can he go tell him? That your water and your afer is meaningless. Your water is just plain cave water. It has no significance. And your your um, ash is just plain ash. Makla just burnt cinders from from a typical from an oven. It has no significance. Meaning, the metaphor was as follows: A kain ben kain. He has the right to be mazet. But one who is not so, he can't turn to the Kayin and say, you have no right to sprinkle this, this water, it's meaningless, it's worthless. So what he meant to say was that here too, the one who is fitting to be the Nasi, he should be reinstated. But the one who, who is not fitting to be the Nasi, he is not meant to be the Nasi. Amalei Rekiva, so Rekiva turns to Rishua, now that Rishua himself came to give this message, so Rekiva turns to him and he said, Rishua and his payasta, have you become appeased? Have you laid it to rest? So he said, We only did this whole affair for the sake of protecting, preserving your covet, your honor. Now that you've been appeased, Me and you, we will go to the, visit the home of Rabbi Gamliel to reinstate him. Says the Gemara Amri, now they deliberated. How are they going to proceed? How can they arrange things? Ni Avri, should we go remove Rabbi Lezer Nazaria completely and reinstate to Rabbi Gamliel? 
Gemir, we know Malam Mekoyz Shemaritin regarding Kodesh things of sanctity of Kedusha we're meant to elevate and not to bring down meaning once we've elevated one to a position to a higher position of spirituality we're not meant to bring him down again he's up there leave him up there so we can't just remove Rebbe Lezer now so what should we do? Nidre Shmar Chadu Shabbat perhaps we should make a rotation one Mar one master should give the Shir one Shabbos apparently he used to give a Shir every Shabbos so let them take a rotation, let them take turns. One will give the Russia one Shabbos. Umar Chad Shabbat and the following Shabbos will give, be given to the other one. That won't work either. Asir Knuy will come to be jealous of each other, meaning since Ramlil was the original Nasi, so to give them equal responsibilities would create jealousy. Ella, rather, let's make the following arrangements. Let's give Ramlil the duty of saying the share three weeks out of the month. Rav Lezer ben Azari, Chal Shabbat, and the full Shabbos will be given to Rav Lezer ben Azari. So this arrangement will work. Rav Lezer ben Azari will remain up there. He'll still have somewhat of authority, and Rav Gamliel will get the majority. Will get three out of four weeks. He'll have his a greater portion. Says the Gemara, "Hainu Damar Mar." This is what we find we find said elsewhere. Shabbos Shami Hoy said the Gemara asks, "Who Shabbos was it?" Meaning, who was the one who gave the drasha that Shabbos? Shal Rav Lezer ben Azari Hoysa. This Shabbos was Rav Lezer Nazari's Shabbos. So apparently there was a rotation and some weeks was him and others was the other one. It concludes the Gemara, who is this Talmud who was the one who asked the question, who posed the question originally that created this whole incident regarding um, whether Arvis is Rishos, is Chayba, who is this Talmud? It says the Gemara, it's a Talmud, Rav Shimon ben Chai Hava. So in conclusion, Rav Gamliel was the Nasi to begin with. Then they removed Rabbi Gamliel, they appointed Rabbi Lezer ben Azari to be Nasi, and then when they reconciled, when they appeased each other, the Gemara concludes that they made a rotation between Rabbi Gamliel and Rabbi Lezer ben Azari. Rabbi Gamliel was the one who gave the Drasha three weeks, three Shabbosim, and Rabbi Lezer ben Azari the fourth Shabbos. Continues the Gemara. One may daven most of the entire day. Om Rabbi Yechanan. However, if one waits that long, a nikra is considered to be negligent. One is not meant to wait so long. One is meant to daven musaf earlier than that. Tanar Rabbana, we learned in the Brites of the following halach. Hoi lefanav shteit filis. One who has before him two tefilis to daven. Acha shal mencha, ba'acha shal musaf. So which one is he meant to daven first? He has a choice of two tefilis, mencha and musaf. Which one gets priority? Says the Brites of mispal shal mencha. Va'acha kachan afterwards, mispal shal musaf. Why? Shazu Tadira, because Mincha is the more commonly prayed fila, it is done every day. Vizu and Tadira, however, Musaf is not as common, therefore we apply the halacha of Tadir Vishenit Tadir. When one has a choice between performing a mitzvah that is more common versus something which is not so common, which one gets priority? Tadir Kaidim. So this is in line with the Shita of the Chacham, that both filas, Mincha and Musaf, may be done the entire day. Therefore, it's not a question of missing out an opportunity. They both have an equal deadline. It's a question just, should we prioritize one over the other? And the conclusion is, yes, the one that is more common, that is more tadir, that is meant to be fulfilled first. Says the Gemara, Rabbi Yehuda Aymer, no. Mispal shal musaf, va'acha kach mispal shal mincha. First comes musaf and then mincha. Why? Because according to Rabbi Yehuda, musaf may only be down until shah shvi, until seven hours. Therefore, musaf, contains an earlier deadline than Mincha. So, don't risk missing the deadline, Davin Musaf early. First comes Musa and then Mincha. Shazu Mitzvah Everest, because Musaf is a passing Mitzvah, is an elapsing Mitzvah, and therefore it takes priority over Mincha Vizu Shein Mitzvah Shein Everest. It is not something which is elapsing right now, it still has plenty of time to Davin Mincha, therefore, notwithstanding the consideration of Tadir, Mishena Tadir, this consideration, of a mitzvah verse of losing out on the opportunity is a much greater consideration, a much more important factor, and therefore Musaf comes before before Mincha. Now Rashi points out that we need actually another another element here. We need to insert another reason here. Why, according to the Tanakama, Mincha comes before Musaf? Because perhaps one may say, no, one should still daven Musaf first since he, since it's getting later and later. He doesn't want to be considered to be a pesheya negligent. Says Rashi, he already did that. Once he waited this long, he waited till the afternoon, he's already considered to be a Peshaya Musaf. So, 
rather than, than become another Pesha on account of a postponing Mincha, don't do that. Go ahead and daven Mincha now so that at least regarding Mincha, you seize the, the first moment, the first opportunity, and you won't be considered to be a Pesha on Mincha. Because I'm Muslim, you're already a Pesha. That's already too bad. It's too late for that. So go ahead and seize the moment, daven Mincha now, the first earliest opportunity, and uh, don't be considered a Pesha. In addition, we have the, the rule of Tadr Shene Tadr, Tadr Kaidem. Since Mincha is more, is more common, therefore it comes first. So we need two elements. One is on a positive note, Tadr comes first, and one is the, the negative note. Meaning, perhaps Musaf should come first so that he's not considered to be a Pesha. Says Rashi, he's already a Pesha since he waited this long, so that's already gone. That consideration is off the table. So all we're left is the consideration of Tadr Shene Tadr, and as well as the fact that he'll, he'll be doing Mincha at the first possible moment, and he will avoid being considered to be a Pesheya on account of Mincha. So that is the, the package deal, the, the double reason for the priority of Mincha over Musaf according to the Tanakam. Ravida, however, holds, no, Musaf comes first since it is a mitzvah verse and a lapsing mitzvah. Continues the Gemara. What is the halacha? Mispal shal mincha, vancha mispal shal musaf. Indeed, like the Tanakam. Says the Gemara of Zera, Kavacholish Megirsi, when he was too weak to learn, or he was he got weakened on account of his learning, he was too weak right now to learn, and he went have a ozel v'yosa afisel be'er nasim artubi. So he went and he sat by the entranceway of the yeshiva of Reb Nasim Artubi. Omar, he said as follows: Why will I? Why am I placing myself here? Kechalfi Rabbanon, when the Rabbanon will pass by, Azaikum Mekamayu, I will get up and accord them honor. I will be Mekayim the mitzvah of standing up for a Talmud Chacham, Vakabal Agra, and I will receive reward on, on that account. Since I can't actually learn, let me at least get the schar for being Mechabed for honoring a Talmud Chacham. Nofach Asr Nosem Artubi, while he was sitting there, Rabbi Nosem Artubi came out of the base Medrash. Amalei Sir Abzeir returned to him and asked him the following question. Man or Mahalacha be Midrasha, did anybody in the Beis Medrash declare whether the Halacha follows Rav Yudah's opinion or not? Omar Leis, he responded to him, Hachi Omar Yechanan, Ein Halacha Rav Yudah, we don't follow Rav Yudah's Shita, the Omar Mispal Adam Shal Musaf, Vacha Mispal Shal Mincha. We don't follow that Shita. We hold that Musaf is meant to be daven the entire day. Therefore, when a person is faced with the choice of Mincha Musaf, he's meant to daven Mincha first on the account of the Tadr consideration we don't have. The consideration of Yudah. Amalei, Sir Zera asked him, Rav Yechon Amra, was this stated by Rav Yechon himself? Amalei, yes. Tana Minei, Arbaim Zimnan. So he studied, he reviewed this, this statement, the name of Rav Yechon, 40 times so that he, he really absorbs it and he remembers it. And Rav Nasim Ratubi was, was kind of amazed. He says, Why are you so excited about this halach? Amalei, Chadilach? Is this a single halacha to you? Meaning, is this the only halacha that, you, that you've heard in the name of Rav and therefore it's so precious to you? Is it a new one to you? Meaning, that you had, you had thought that this halacha was, was perhaps attributed to somebody else, and now that you hear that it was, that it was uh, in the name of Rav Yechanan, so it, it's, it's new to you, it's renewed to you, and therefore it is, it is precious to you. It is new to me. I was uncertain. I thought perhaps this was Mishum Alevi's halacha. Now that I hear from you with clarity that Rabbi Yechon is the one who stated it, it is precious to me. I want to review it and review it until it's clear by me and I absorb it completely and do not forget the attribution to Rabbi Yechon. Continues the Gemara. Omer Mishum Alevi. Call him a spoutful of Mishum one who delays his Musaf until after the deadline, until after seven hours, according to the Shita of Yudah. Allah Vakasim Aymer, regarding him, the Pasuk says as follows. Nugi Memoyed, you'll be broken on account of delaying the, the times of Tfilah on Yom Tayyim, on the day of Musaf. Asafti, I've destroyed you, Memchahayu, this destruction was coming from you. You caused it. It says the Gemara, my Mashmalai Nugi, Lishu the Tavru. What do we find that Nugi is referred to as, as breaking? Can the Tagar of Yasev, Rav Yasev interprets Tavra, Asi al Sanein, Vais Israel, he interprets this Pasik. Nugi means Tavra, breakage, will come on the enemies of the Eden. This is a metaphor for the Eden. Al the Ichru, Zmanam, died Yushalayim, they delayed the times of the Mayed, of the Yamtiv, of the, of the Tfil of the Yamtiv, Yushalayim. So we see that a punishment of, of breakage, of destruction, befalls one who neglects. To daven his his musaf in the right time. Amar Blazer, come a spout tefillah shal shachris lacha shabar shayis Rabbi Yehuda, one who delays his his morning tefillah after four hours, according to Rabbi Yehuda, which Rabbi Yehuda holds that four hours is the deadline. All of our kasev oimran him the pasuk says nugi me moi dasafti mchahayu. 
you will be afflicted on the count that you delayed your time of tefillah. My mashman, I nugi listen at Sarah. Who do you find that nugi is affliction? My soul will drip from from affliction. The psalis, the virgin will be will be pained, will be afflicted, and it is bitter to her. Masha points out the difference in the approach of the Gemara regarding Musaf. The Gemara says one who delays, he gets broken. One who merely delays shachris, he gets afflicted. So why the difference in the consequences? Masha, it's a big difference. Shachris has the option of makeup of tashlumen. One who misses shachris can always make it up. Therefore, the the the, the consequence is of lesser severity. However, regarding Musaf, we learned earlier, Taisa explained to us that Musaf cannot be made up. Musaf has no tashlumen, and therefore a more harsher description for this type of behavior. Says the Gemara of Avi Cholash Lesla Perkler of Yosef. It was a custom and practice of the Rosh Yeshiva to give a drasha shir on Shabbos before Tfilis Musaf. Rav Avi was weak, and he couldn't make it to the Perka. The Rav Yosef, the share of Yosef on Shabbos. Lamachar, the next day, also when he came to Beis Medish, Abaye was, was concerned that Rav Yosef perhaps was slighted on account of Rav Avya's absence. So he wanted to rest his mind, he wanted to appease Rav Yosef, and he did as follows. Ba'a Abaye la nuchi daita Rav Yosef. Abaye wanted to appease, to rest the mind of Rav Yosef, to mollify him. Amalei, so Abaye turned to Rav Avya and he said, My time la osa ma'la pirka, why, why didn't you attend the share? He wanted to hear a reason, and then he can relate this reason to Rav Yosef. So he asked him, why didn't you show up? I was weak, I couldn't make it. Why didn't you taste something, why don't you have a snack, and then uh, come to the drasha? Abi says, one may do so? One may eat prior to Musaf? Do you not hold the hodder of Hunah? The halacha that Rav Huna taught us. So Rav Huna also the Adam she eaten klum kaidim is spalt with a musafin. One may not taste anything before he davens musaf. Also the Adam she eaten klum. Not only a meal, even to taste before musaf is prohibited. Amalei, so Rav I told him, okay, if that's the case, if that was the reason that you were prevented from coming, iboy le lemar, you should have done the following solution. Iboy lemar let's luye it's loyf the musafin biyachet. You should have davened the tefillah of musaf. On your own, velito midi, and then you could have eaten something lamesi, and then you could have come. So why don't you do that? Amalei. So Rav Avi says, one may do so, one may daven on his own. Do you not then hold Lador Yechlan? This halacha said Rav Yechlan asle lo Adam. A person is not allowed to lahaktim sheaktim tefilas tefilasativa. A person may not precede his tefilas tefilasativa. How can you suggest that I should have davened on my own before the tefilas? Amr lay, so Abai told him, La bitch, my Allah. Haven't we learned that this halacha, Amr Ab Abba, Bitsibur Shonim? This halacha of Rabbi Yechanan was interpreted by Rabbi Abba as referring to Bitsibur, one is present inside the, the shul within the congregation, then he cannot set himself apart and daven on his own. That is not what is meant to be done. But if one is merely at home and on his own, why can't you daven by yourself if it's necessary for the, for the uh, attendance of the Rosh? So that was the exchange between Rav Avi and Abayah. Concludes the Gemara. For less hilchasa, the halacha does not follow. Loi Rav Huna, neither Rav Huna is a shita, v'loi Rav Shuban Levi, nor the chiddush of Shuban Levi. Explains the Gemara. We don't follow Rav Huna hadamarn, as we just said. That Rav Huna prohibits one from being tiny, from tasting, merely tasting something prior to Musaf. We don't follow this shita, and as brought down in the halacha. One may taste something prior to Musaf. On Shabbos, he can make kiddush and eat bread or or a or cake. Up to the point of a sheer kibetza that he's allowed to do even before Musaf. So we don't follow the stringency of Rav Huna. Continues the Gemara, we don't follow the stringency of Rav Shoma Levi. As soon as the time for Mincha arrives, one may not taste anything prior to Davani Mincha. We don't follow the Shita. And it's brought down halacha, many different views regarding the. the the limitation, the restriction of, of eating and having a suda prior to Mincha, certainly regarding a suda gdoyla, a, a great event, like, like a, a festive meal, like a, a wedding, one is not meant to do so, samal minchaktana, close to minchaktana, meaning from nine hours and on in the day, that is something one is not meant to, be, to do, but however, the stringency of Rishom Levi that we don't follow, we are allowed to be toyim, koyidim tefil samincha. Continues the Mishnah. Reb Nechunya ben Akana, he had a practice that he used to dive in a very special tefillah. One tefillah on the way into the base menders and one tefillah on the way out. 
and on his way in and on his way out. Tefillah Tzara, a short personal tefillah. One is meant to, before approaching a, a, an activity, one is meant to say a personal tefillah, as the Sfarim say, to daven a personal prayer to Hashem, to give him hatzlacha in the event that he is about to commence. So he had two tefillahs, on the way in of the Beis Medrash, on the way out. This was a daily affair. Amr Lai, so the Talmidim told them, Ma makam tefillah What is the, the nature of this tefillah? What, what are you davening? Amr Lai, he said as follows, Bechnisos yamei way in. That no mishap should occur on my account. I shouldn't make any mistake in learning. I'm thanking Hashem, thank you for giving me the opportunity, for giving me a portion in the base Medrash for allowing me to spend my time learning. What was the exact text of his tefillah on the way in? It should be a will Hashem. No mishap, no takala should happen as a result of me, of my learning. I shouldn't make a mistake in Edvar Halacha. And therefore, since I'm going to be learning properly, I'm going to have the proper seat, the Shmaya, proper clarity, my friends will join in my, in my joy, in my simcha, in my learning. Something which is meant to be tame, I shouldn't rule on it to be pure. Tame and the reverse as well. Something which is pure, I shouldn't say it's tame. And similarly, and my colleagues as well should not err in their halacha. And therefore, since they will have the clarity, I will also join in their simcha and their joy. As Mashar explains, one of the qualities, one of the Conditions of proper learning Torah, as mentioned, Perkyovis is Mesamech Sabrius. One is meant to be happy with others. The learning experience is meant to be a joyous, festive event, and this was his tefillah. On the way out, what did I say? I thank you, Hashem. I acknowledge you. I thank you. You've placed my portion amongst the ones who dwell in the base medrash, and not amongst that sit, the unlearned people that sit and, and wallow away their days in an idle chatter. And this is the contrast between me and them. I rise early and they rise early. The difference is, Ani Mashkim, I arise with the Torah, to be Zeichat to immerse in Torah, Vehem Ashkim and Vervatim. However, their arisal is for idle chatter. Ani Omel Vehem Amelim. Vehem Ashkim and Vervatim, they get up for Vermatim idle activities. Ani Omel Vehem Amelim, I toil, I labor. And they too, they too toil and labor. What is the difference? Ani Omel Omel Kabbal Sachar, I toil, I work hard, and I get reward on account of my work. They work but don't get any reward. I'm running. And they too are running. I'm running to the world to come. And they're running to get him. Says the Chavaz Chaim. What does it mean? Everybody's getting reward. People who toil or work, who labor on worldly matters. They're also getting paid for their work, says the Chavetz Chaim. The difference is as follows. When one labors for worldly matters, he gets hired, gets paid for the result of his effort. He's commissioned to build a building, to tailor a suit. If he's successful, he gets paid. If he stops in the middle, he can't carry on. He doesn't complete his job. He doesn't get paid for the effort. However, one who's involved in spirituality, in learning, in davening, whatever it may be, he gets schar for his toil, for his effort, says the Chavetz Chaim. That is the pshat. They don't get paid for the work for the amelus. But us, however, I work, I toil, I labor, and I get schar for the toil, for the labor, not only for the results. If one is not matzliach and ruchnius, he only learns a little bit, he tries, he can't understand, he can't remember, he's not success, successful in learning. Nevertheless, he gets paid, he gets schar, and the omel and makabal sachar get paid for the omel, for the toil, for the effort. In spirituality, it's the effort that counts and not the results. Beautiful verse from the Chavetz Chaim. Continues the Gemara. Tana Rabban, Kshachalar Velezer, when Velezer got sick, Nichesu Tamid of Levakri, his students came in to visit him. Teach us the way of life. We should merit getting a portion of 
Amalem as follows. Number one, he's Zor Bechvait Chaverchem. Be careful with the honor of your friend. Be careful in Ben Adma Chaveroi, interpersonal relationships. Number two, Ominu Bnechem Naigoyen. Prevent your, your children from reciting too much Torah Shabbat so that they don't neglect the oral Torah, Torah uh, don't recite too much Torah Shabbat so that they don't neglect their, their involvement in Torah Shabbat Peh. Minu Bnechem Naigoyen. Number three, Veshivum Ben Birke Tamit Chacham. Place them amongst the knees, between the knees of Tamit Chachamim, so that they learn Torah and they learn from their ways. Ukshatim Espalim, while you daven, do. Pay attention in front of who you're standing to enhance your tefillah, enhance your concentration. And as a result of this, When Rabbi Yechem Zakai got sick, his students came to visit him. When he noticed I'm coming, his chalivka he begins to cry. Oh my Talmud, the Talmud exclaimed to him, Why are you crying? Neri saw the light of Israel, the right hand pillar. You, you, you sustain Chal Yisrael. Patish HaChazak, the mighty hammer, your, your most powerful in learning Torah. They gave him all these great titles and descriptions. Why are you crying? Amr Lahem, as follows. If they were only taking me in front of a, a king, a human king of flesh and blood, who was so fragile, and so frail. Shayim Khan, Mahabakever, today he's alive, tomorrow he's in the grave. And his abilities are so limited. Shim Kaisalai, what would happen if he gets mad at me? In Kasa Kasoilam, his anger isn't everlasting. It is only temporary. Vimaisreni, if he locks me up in jail, any Suri Soilam, this captivity won't be everlasting. Vima Miseni, if he even kills me, Aim Misasa Misas Oilam is not eternal. He can only kill my guf and not my nishama. And in addition, I could appease him with word, I could try to convince him about my innocence, I could bribe him with money. Even though he has such limitations, if I were to be brought in front of such a king, I would, I would tremble in fear, I would begin to cry. Now that they're taking me to Hashem, that is, he's everlasting, he lives forever and ever. Shem Koyis, he's unlimited, he's, his abilities are, are limitless. Shem Koyis, if he gets mad at me, he gets angry, his anger is eternal. If he ties me up, that is eternal. If he puts me to death, that is everlasting. And also, I have no influence on him. If I can't appease him with mere words, he doesn't take any bribes. Not only that, I have two pathways in front of me. One leading to Gan Eden, one leading to Gehenim. If any day I don't even know in which path they will lead me. If so, how could you expect me not to cry? Says the Gemara, Amr Loi. So the students told him, Rabbeinu Barachin, please give us a bracha. Amalem, so he told me, Yeratzayin, should be Hashem's will, should they moira shemaim aleichem, that Hashem's fear should rest upon you, at least, ke moira bas of Adam, at least as much as the moira bas of Adam, as the human fear rests upon you. You should be afraid of Hashem as much as you're afraid of a human being. You should be afraid to do averis. Amalei talmidim atkan, only until this, this is a very limited bracha, you only want us to fear Hashem as much as, as we fear a human being. Amalem, balavai, if only that it would be so. Because we see that a person generally is more afraid of, of a human being, his fellow frail human being, than of Hashem. Teidu, look, I'll prove to you. When a person sins, what does he say? He doesn't say, oh, Hashem is watching. Even though he's fully aware that Hashem is there, Hashem is watching. What does he say? I wish, I hope nobody's watching. So apparently, what's really preventing a person from sinning is the Moira of Adam. So I bless you, at least you should have that level of fear from Hashem. You should fear Hashem the same level as people fear a Bas of Adam. When he was being nifter, Amalem, he announced, Panu Atuma, remove all the vessels from this oil, from this home, so that it doesn't become Tameh on account of my passing away. So we see, this is what he had in mind. At this moment, exalted moment of leaving the world, he was concerned with Ben Adam al not harming a fellow person. Remove the, the Kalem so that they don't require purification and, and 
one shouldn't have to go through the trouble of being retired them or demolishing the Kvecheres. That was his concern. And the number two thing he says, he kisu, echinu, kisu, prepare a chair, the Chizkiyo Melch Yehuda Sheba. Chizkiyo, the king of Yehuda is coming to, to greet me and to bring me to, to heaven. Prepare for him a chair. The Mepharshim say that what is the significance of Chizkiyo since both Rabbi Yechon and Mazaka and Chizkiyo did tremendous amount. They were equal in their, in their accomplishment of, of spreading terror amongst Kal Yisrael. We know that Rabbi Yechon and Zakkai preserved the Yavon of the Chachamea after the Churban, the, the, the group of Chachamea and Yavna, they were spared on account of Rabbi Yechon and Zakkai's request. So that ensured the continuity of Torah Shabbat, of our tradition. So they did a tremendous amount for Klai Yisrael's Torah and Cheskiyo as well. The Gemara relates that in his time, everybody was well versed in the most difficult halachas. So he did much to sp- for the spread of Torah amongst Klai Yisrael. They had this common denominator, prepare a chair for Cheskiyo is coming to greet me. Continues the Gemara. Gamliel, Mispal Adam Shman Esri. One is meant to daven the entire Shman Esri, 18 brachas. Rabbi Shua, I'm going to say, an abridged version of Shman Esri. Rekiva, it depends. Im shgur if the words are fluent in his mouth, he can recite it without error. So then, Mispal Shman Esri, he's meant to daven the entire Shman Esri. Vim la, but if it's not fluent, he'll have some difficulty. Mispal, me'en yitches, he should only do the abridged version, the one who explains exactly what this means. One who makes his tefillah a, a kva, a habit, more will explain what this means. Any tefillah tachnunim, his tefillah don't have the, the, the mile of called tachnunim, they're not called, called a supplication, they don't have the, the, they're not called tachnunim, if he treats them as a, as a kva, as a habit. One who's traveling in a dangerous place, Mispalt filled sorry should pray the following short prayer. Voimer, Hoisha as Hashem as Samcha, Hashem save, redeem our nation, your nation as Esher Yisrael, the remnants of Kal Yisrael. Behold, Parshas Ibor, when the Parshas Ibor happens, the Mark will explain what this means. Even then, Yutzer Hechem, Lefanecha, their needs should be before you, Baruch Atah Hashem, Shemayat Fil. Hoya Reichva Lachamar, one who's riding on a donkey, and it comes time to daven, Yer the Yispali should come down and daven. If he may need yochel, layer it. If he can't come down, since there's nobody to hold his donkey, and he'll be concerned about the the whereabouts of his donkey, about holding on to his donkey during davening, and will it will disturb his prayer. Yachzer is pun of. Therefore, he should stay on his donkey and merely turn his face towards the base of mikdash. If he may need yochel, yachzer is pun of. He can't even do that. Yechavan is liboy. Can I get base kodesh kodeshim? He should direct his heart. Towards the Kaddish Kaddashim. Same halacha regarding one who is Mahalach, but Sfina, a ship, or Ba'asto, on a raft, Yechavnes Liboy, Kenegid Beis Kaddish Kaddashim, he should direct his heart towards the base of English. Says the Gemara, Hani Yutches, Kenegid Me. The Chacham established 18 brachas. What did this correspond to? Amar Hill, Blade of Shmuel, Rachmeni, Kenegid, Yutches Askores, the 18 times that Hashem's name is mentioned, Shama David, Bahava Hashem, Benayilim, in the capital. Of Mizmor David, Hava Hashem Bnei which is referring to Tfilah, as the Gemara Shana explains. So the 18 times that the Shem Hashem is mentioned in this capital, that corresponds to the 18 bracha of Shem Nesri. Rav Yisuf Amar Keneged Yutches Askarish Bekrishma. It is corresponding to the 18 times that Shem's name is mentioned in Krishma. Finally, Amar of Tanchum Amar Shem Alevi Keneged Shmoy Nesri Chulish Besedra. It is Keneged as opposite, corresponding to the 18 vertebrae in one's. Spine. So we have three shitas, 18 times Hashem's name is mentioned in the capital of Mizbel David, 18 times Hashem's name is mentioned in Krishma, or the 18 chulis, 18 vertebrae in one's spine. Continues the Gemara of Omar of Tanchum, Omar of Yishuv Malevi. Hamespalel, Tzorech Sheyichra, he must bow to the extent and Sheyispakeku Kol Chul Yishu until all the vertebrae in his spine should protrude out. He must bow to that extent. Ula Amar, at Kadei, Shiro Isser Kineged Libay. When one bows, two folds appear in front of him, one on top, one on bottom. So the space, the flat space in between the folds, need to be merely the size of an Isser of a coin. And this is Kineged Libay, Kineged his heart. Again, Ula Amar, at Kadei, Shiro Isser, an Isser should be seen, Kineged Libay, the size, the flesh, the size of an Isser, should remain unfolded. And that is Kineged Libay. Rachanina Omar, Kivet Shinenea Roshi, once he, he attempts, he bows his head, that is enough. Shuven Yitzorach. Omar Rava, that is only for who the Metzar Nafshe. When he's pained, he's unable to do more, he's an elderly man, he's, he's sick, so that's enough. A Machzik, Mechzikim on the Kara. If he appears as though he's trying, he's making an attempt to bow, then that's sufficient. Says Zigmar, okay, you gave us a list of 18 brachas, and they correspond to various things. Hani, 
Tamni Sri? Are they really only 18? Tish we have, and we know that we have 19 brachas in Shman Esri. Says the Gemara, yes indeed, Amar Belevi, Birchas Hatstukim, some say Birchas Haminim, the bracha that was intended against the heretics, but Yavna Teknoa, they established it in Yavna, as the Gemara will explain later on. Says the Gemara, Kenegad Mi Teknoa, okay, so there were 18 original, then another one they added, but we had it, something which corresponded to the 18. We, we explained that they corresponded to 18 names of Hashem, etc. Now that they added a 19th, it needs to correspond to something. Connected me to says the Gemara, Omar Blevi. Look Rabbi Hillel, Braid of Shwam Rachmani, according to the view of Rabbi Hillel, Braid of Shwam Rachmani, that the 18 brachas correspond to the 18 Askaris in the, in the chapter of Tilm, in the capital of Mizrahul David. So indeed, we have a 19th one. Connected Kail HaKavit Hirim. Hashem of glory thundered. Although it's not a complete Shem Hashem, it is a shortened, just an Aleph and a Lamed. Nevertheless, this was a source, this corresponded to Birch HaSaminim. As the Mepharshim explained, the Brach of Minim was, Hashem protects, Hashem destroy the heretics, those that threaten our way of life, our Torah. Kel HaKovid Hirim, Hashem of glory thunders. He thundered and destroyed all the Minim and Stukim. Lurav Yosef, according to Rav Yosef, that the brach has corresponded to the Shemis in Krishna, so it's Keneged Echad Shemit Krishna. The Birchas Hamin and Birchas Hatzukim corresponded to the word Echad, the oneness of Hashem, as opposed to the Minim and Hatzukim that threaten our Torah and the oneness of Hashem. Finally, Rav Tanchem, or Meshub Levi, that they correspond, they are Keneged, the vertebrae in the spine, so the 19th brach is Keneged. Chulyaktano Shabashadra, small vertebrae in the spine. Some say this was the one called Luz. So we found a 19th vertebrae which corresponds to the 19 brachas in Shmoina Esri.